There are some very, very strict boundaries and guidelines that, that we need you to go by. It's not fair! Do everything with a good attitude. If you don't come up now, I'm cutting your internet privileges. Mom! Jeez! This house is not a democracy. We are in charge. you're a parent, I hope that at some point during your parenting experience you hear this. I hope that at some point during your experience you hear this idea of you're the worst parent ever. And because the truth of the matter is, if, if you hear that, it's probably an indication that you're doing something right. I mean, think about this. If everything you do, we said this last week, if everything you do makes your, parent, makes your kids happy, you're going to give the world a terrible adult. If everything you do, think about this, as parents, I mean, we know this, if, if we did everything that our kids wanted, we would have kids that are obese, we would have kids that are lazy, we would have kids that are disrespectful, they'd be great at, at you know, uh, games, they would be experts on stupid YouTube videos, right? But as far as being a productive, healthy, functioning, fully functioning adult, they would not be a great asset to the world if everything we did made them happy. So at some point along the way, you're going to say some things and do some things and insist on some things for your children that are going to upset them. And they're going to say things like, you're the worst parent ever. I hope you hear that at some point. Now, today we're going to have this conversation about disciplining your kids. You excited about that? Are your kids excited about that? I mean, there's no, right? But um, so here's the thing about disciplining kids. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of, uh, it, there's a lot of anxiety about that. There's a lot of uncertainty about how to go about it today. And I think we can kind of flesh that out today and give you some ideas that might prove helpful as you're processing this, this idea of disciplining your kids. Now, uh, I, I was reading a book the other day about personal development. And the author in this book, he, he, he said this. He said, um, some, nope, I'm going to go back. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Gang, I'm going to need help going all the way back to the beginning. This is what the author said. He said, the things which are most important don't always scream the loudest. Right? Now think about this. I mean, as far as when, when it comes to the area of personal development, that makes sense. The things that are the most important don't always scream the loudest, right? But I thought as soon as I read that, I was like, that guy's not a parent. Because the most important things in your life, those little people, they often do scream the loudest, don't they? They're the ones that make all kinds of noise and demand all kinds of attention. Um, and so uh, l- let me just say this right up front. If, if you've been a parent for any time at all, you have wrestled with this matter of how to discipline your kiddos. And if you're not a parent, or if your kids are raised and gone, you've got a couple things going on. First of all, if uh, a lot of times, I mean, I felt like this before, before I had kids, right? I'll discipline my kids. Like when I'm a parent, I know how I'll discipline my kids. Right? Remember that before you had kids? You with me? You knew exactly how you're going to discipline your kids. And then, and then you had kids, and, and things changed a little bit, you know? Um, and the second thing is, um, if you don't have kids, or if, you, if your kids are gone now, you've, you've raised them and, and they're gone out of the home, um, the second thing that's probably true about you is you wish that some parents would listen to you. Isn't that true? Like, if you don't have kids, or if your kids are gone, when you're out in public, you see kids, you know, at, at, at Walmart, or you see them in the restaurant, you're like, I could probably teach those parents a thing or two. Isn't that true? And it usually revolves around this idea of discipline, okay? Um, so, so we have this sense that discipline is important, uh, but there's a lot of confusion about exactly what it is and, and how to go about it. And so again, today I want to give you six ideas, and that sounds like a lot, but really they kind of connect one to another. Six ideas about how to discipline your kids. But before we get there, I, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of our understanding of discipline. Um, so I googled parental discipline. Like, what is parental discipline? So I, I googled it, and the first website to pop up was, was WebMD, but the second one, the second website actually caught my attention. It was um, the American Humane Association. <laughs> like, what does the, like, you know, the Humane Asso- American Humane Asso- Association, like, typically when you think about that, you think about puppies. 
And I mean, there are some similarities between puppies and kids, but I'm like, why would the American Association be talking about discipline? And so I actually did some research and I found out a few things I didn't know before. And that was, um, this is an organization, the American uh, Humane Association actually was begun in 1877. And, and it, it, they were started with this. They were dedicated to the, they continue to be dedicated to the welfare of animals and children. I didn't know that, did you? Like, aren't you glad you came to church? I mean, that's just good right there. That's, you know... Um, but the second thing was, as I read through this, I, I saw that the, the American Humane Association had some interesting things to say about parental discipline. So on their website, uh, guys, we're going to start at the, at the first slide again. Let's give this a whirl again. On their website, they asked the question, what is discipline? And this was their response. As part of their natural development, children sometimes challenge or test parental and adult expectations and authority. Can I get a big duh? Like, if you're a parent at all, you're like, well, that's kind of obvious. Of course kids do that. They're going to they're gonna test you. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna come up against you. They're going to not do what you say to do. They're going to do what you say not to do, right? And, and so the American Human, Humane Association says, you know, puppies and kids, this is what they do. And then they went on. Sometimes children simply choose to misbehave in order to gain something. You know, attention, an object, power, peer approval, a smack on the crack, you know, you never know what they're trying to gain, right? So th- then they go on. They said, this is a significant part of the growth process of children, like testing authority and, and testing boundaries. It's normal for kids to do that. Yet it should not be without consequence. In other words, the American Humane Association says, when children misbehave, which they will do because it's natural for them, it should not be without consequence, okay? You should not allow this misbehavior, this disobedience, this rebellion, this whatever it is, to go without consequence. No. They say discipline is how children learn right from wrong, acceptable from unacceptable. So at some point, like, kids do not come into this world saying, oh, I understand that. I, I got it. I know, how to, I know how to do good. I always tell people, like, if you don't, born, if you don't believe that we're born with a broken, if the humanity is broken at birth, if you don't believe that we're born with a sinful nature, it's because you're not a parent. Like, none of us parents have ever had to teach our kids how to lie. None of us parents have ever teach, had to teach our kids to steal. None of us as parents have ever teach our kids how to be disrespectful. We've not had to teach our kids how, how to be defiant. None of us. They just get it naturally. Our job as parents is to teach them how to do the right thing, is to teach them how to do the good thing. That's our job as parents. Now, they say discipline, go back. Discipline is how children learn right from wrong, acceptable from unacceptable. So it's our responsibility as parents to discipline. And then they say this. Parental or adult discipline of children should be designed to help children engage better with others and to modify or control their behavior. So there's a point to discipline. It's helping your children get better. It's helping them like themselves more. It's helping them interact with one another. It's helping them to understand it, to respect and submit to authority, be it, be it the government or God or, or you know, uh, an employer, whatever the case. This is the, what discipline does. Then they say, this is a really important line. Look what they said. Providing appropriate discipline to children. Read this line with me, please is one of the most essential responsibilities of a parent. Like, if you're a parent, this conversation that we're going to have today is one of the primary responsibilities that you have. Now, I'm just going to tell you something right now. If you as a parent don't assume this responsibility, someone who doesn't care about them as much as you do will. Right? If you don't discipline your children, if you don't accept the responsibility to step up and teach your child how to function well in a home, in a work environment, in a community, how, they're, how to connect to God, how to connect to a spouse, how to serve those who are less fortunate, if you don't teach them how to do that, someone else who doesn't like them as much as you do is going to do that. Discipline is one of the most important roles that a parent plays, that of a disciplinarian. Now, look what they say. Providing consistent and positive discipline helps children grow into responsible adults, which is the end game for all of us, isn't it? Like, I want my children to grow up to be a responsible adult. I want my girls, all six of them, I want them all to grow up to assume responsibility, to care well for themselves, to serve others well, to love God, to to be a value adder wherever they go. And the key here is discipline. It's my responsibility as a parent. So, be, before we go any farther, because this is really important, is everybody awake? Come on now. Everybody awake? All right. 
Before we go any farther and talk about discipline, I have to remind you what we talked about last week. If you weren't here last week, I really encourage you because last week was fundamental. We had a conversation in which we talked about the most important responsibility of a parent is to care well for yourself because you're a gift to your child. And if you don't care well for yourself, you're going to be a gift that brings them shame and dishonor. And and they're not ultimately going to be proud of you, which is what Proverbs says. Parents are the pride of their children. I encourage you to go back. But the key lesson from last week was this. The better you are, the better they are. Say that with me because that's really important. The better you are, the better they are. In other words, if you are caring for yourself spiritually and physically and emotionally and mentally... If you're caring for yourself, you're going to be a better parent to them. And the better you are, the better they will be. So we talked about that all last week. And I I encourage you as parents to think about how am I caring for yourself? Because listen to this. Let me tell you, a parent who is not caring for himself or herself is not going to be able to discipline wisely, effectively, and with love. In fact, parents who are not caring for themselves well will end up looking like this. (laughs) Have you ever felt like this as a parent? Come on now. I mean, I don't even know how the hair standing up thing happens, but you've had moments in your parenting experience, you're like, good God, I'm going to break you, right? It's like, oh man, and you're like, where did that come from? This is what happens when parents who don't care for themselves, this is what we end up looking like or feeling like because we haven't taken time to nurture our spiritual well-being or our physical well-being or our mental well-being. I mean, or we're, not getting, we're not getting adequate self-care. If you're not doing that, you cannot do discipline well. And last week, I encouraged you as parents to identify one, two, or three areas in which you could begin caring for yourself better. And I hope, I hope that you actually started that, because if you don't, listen, this is so important. If you don't do care for yourself, you're not going to be able to do what we talk about today. You're going to function out of anger. You're going to function out of impatience. You're going to function out of stress. And that's no place to begin the whole conversation of discipline. Now, the American Humane Association says this. Providing appropriate discipline to children is one of the most essential uh, responsibilities of a parent. And providing consistent and positive discipline helps children grow into responsible adults. You guys agree with that? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, as I read through that, it sounded kind of familiar. And I've I've, I've shared with you before that one one of my favorite spiritual disciplines is to engage in Bible reading. Like I find when I open up the Bible and read, a, a few things happen. I, I, get, I get good ideas because God's ideas are, are good ideas and, and they help me as a man. They help me as a husband. They help me as a father. They, so I get good ideas when I read uh, the scriptures and God often will use his word to speak into my life and to, to change attitudes and to point out weaknesses. So I find this a very helpful spiritual discipline. And I'd actually encourage you, if you don't do that, uh, we have Bible reading plans in the back. We also have little books called Daily Bread. It's like a five minute devotional, kind of like allow you to have an experience with God's word. I'd encourage you to do that. It's a great discipline. Even if you're not a believer, listen, let me just stop for a minute. People read things they don't believe all the time. You read the news, newspaper, you read the internet. We all have a healthy dose of skepticism when we read this stuff, and yet we read it anyway. So I just say, look, even if you don't believe the Bible's true, it, it, it's got some great stuff in it. I would encourage you to get in there and just open it up and allow it to shape your thinking and, and get some good ideas from it. Now, um, one, of the, one of the spiritual disciplines I've found to be helpful is to read through the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is simply a book, is a collection of wise teachings, and it um, has 31 chapters, and a typical month has 30 to 31 days. So typically every month I'm able to read through this book, and a couple of years ago, um, as I was thinking about parenting, I read through the book, and I wrote down every verse that Proverbs had to say about parenting. And um, one verse in particular stuck out to me, Proverbs 19, 18, look what it says. Read this, will you read this with me, please? Look at this. Discipline your children while there's hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. That's huge. Discipline your kids while there is hope. Otherwise, if you don't discipline your children, you will ruin their lives. So the the American Humane Association says that discipline is one of the most essential responsibilities of a parent, and that doing it well helps children grow into responsible adults. And I think Solomon actually steps it up a bit. He ups the ante a little bit, because he makes it sound like there's a window of time that if missed, will destroy their future. He says, discipline them while there is hope. Now listen, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. 
I really do. I, I believe that, that anybody can change. I believe that. But I've seen some people, and, and you've seen some people, that when you look at them, you say, eh, it's going to take a miracle. You know who I'm talking about? I mean, you have that person in your mind, don't you? You're like, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Right? There's not a lot of hope for change unless God does something really big or unless something drastic happens, right? There's probably not going to be a change. Solomon, listen to this. This is so critical because Solomon is essentially saying to us as parents, he's essentially saying this, look, discipline effectively now so there's no need for a drastic intervention later. I mean, if we get it right now, we, our, our kids aren't going to have to wait for an arrest or a divorce or a bankruptcy or, or some kind of crisis in their life to ultimately change them. Solomon says, discipline them now while there's hope. If you get it right now, it's not going to take something drastic in their future to wake them up and get them back on track. And when I stop and think about the responsibility of parenting, I'll be honest with you. It's huge. I mean, parents, can I get a witness? I mean, when we stop and think about the responsibility that as parents we have in disciplining our children, it's huge because think about this. The things that we're teaching them today are determining the kinds of adults they'll be tomorrow. For instance, a work ethic. If we don't teach our children to work now, when are they going to learn to work? If we don't teach our children respect, when will they learn to respect? If we don't teach our children responsibility, when will they learn how to be responsible? If we don't teach them to be generous, when will they learn to be generous? If we allow our children to live with a spirit of entitlement, when does that stop? You see, the things that we teach them now in this window of hope ultimately determine the kind of person that they're going to become later. I mean, kids aren't, again, they're not naturally born with, with, with great and positive character. I mean, there's a lot of goodness about them, right? The Bible says we're made in the image of God. But if you've had a little person around for a while, I've had six of them, so I have a little bit of experience in this, right? If you've had a person, little person around, all of a sudden you realize, like, they need some training. They need some mentoring. They need some, some guidance. They need some teaching if they're going to become a person whose life is value added. So Solomon says, parents, you, you discipline them or you ruin their lives. You discipline them while there's hope or you ruin their lives. Now here's the thing. I cannot tell you exactly how to discipline your child. I, I, I don't know your child. You know your child. That's your job. You're to have a PhD in your child. That's your job. But what I can do is I can give you six ideas that you should at least put on the table as you think about how to discipline your child. So I want to get right into them. Idea number one. Discipline should always be done in the context of love. Now, if you have a pencil and a paper, you can write these down. If you don't, we're going to post them on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash mychurch180 today. We're going to post them there because these are critical ideas. And my hope is, is as you leave here today, you'll begin a conversation about discipline in your home. Discipline should always be done in the context of love. Now, my, my dad used to tell me before he would spank me, my dad believed in spanking, and uh, from time to time I do too, and um, he would tell me this. He would say, this hurts me a lot more than it does you. Did anybody else ever hear that as a kid? Did you ever look at him and you're like, Pfft. I mean, you didn't actually do that, right? Because like two extra swats, but like in your mind you're thinking, you're full of it, dude. This isn't going to hurt you one tiny bit. I didn't understand that at all, and I would have gladly traded places with him in those moments. But, but then I became a dad. And, and now I do understand it. Because what I understand is that, that when you love someone, you're willing to let them hurt. And you're even willing to be the source of their pain in an effort to help them get better. Am I right? My kids don't understand this now, but watching my kids lose privileges kills me. And, but they don't understand that. They just see me as the ogre who's taking away their toys or suspending their rights. They don't, they don't see what I see. I see an adult being made. They just see a, a, a mean dad. <laughs> but, I, but I see this. Um, 
This is a time to love my children. This season, this window of hope, it's, just, it's a time to love them enough to be a point of pain in their lives. But this pain is always done in the context of love. Does this make sense? And here's what I found. I want to show you the greatest way to show love. The greatest way to show love is through time. You spend time with the things you love. You spend time with the people that you love. Let me just take a shot at Facebook real quick, right? Some of us might actually present a good case. If we were accused of loving Facebook more than our kids, we might be, the evidence might be there to convict us, right? I mean, the question is simply this. Where do you spend your time? Because where you spend your time is an indication of whom or what you love. Now, shot over. Everybody breathe, and I. When I spend time with my kids, I find two things happen. I'll bet you do too. When I spend time with my kids, I find, number one, I have to discipline less. Yeah? The more time I spend, them, spend with them, the less I have to discipline them. The second thing I find is that when I spend time with my kids, the discipline is better received because they know dad loves me. I mean, we'll, we'll have this moment. There'll be a grounding or there'll be a, you know, a, a corporal punishment or, you know, whatever it is. Um, there's some kind of punishment that's handed out. But it's not long after that the hugs are given and received. Because they know this, this pain has been, it, it hurt, but it hurt in an environment of love. Now, when I don't spend time with my kids, and that does happen from time to time, unfortunately, and I discipline themselves, what I found is that they have a tendency to see themselves as an intruder or an inconvenience in my life. This is what I mean. You know how when you get really, 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 really busy and, and things are going right along, you're going, going busy, 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 and your kids show up and they're like, Dad, and you're like, what? Dad, I need your help. What? And before long, like, what, 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 what? Boom, you're grounded. Get out of here. Go sit in the corner, whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, because we're so busy, our kids see our discipline as an act of, we're aggravated. We're, they're an inconvenience to us. They're an intrusion in our life. And if we're not careful, we end up aggravating our children. St. Paul actually wrote a little letter and he said, he was talking to children. He said, I want you to obey your parents. And then right after he said, children, obey your parents. He specifically said this, fathers, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. I want to just throw this out there and I'm a guy and I, if, if, you know, I actually would, I'm speaking to myself first and then I'm talking with you. I'm having this conversation with all of us. I'm afraid sometimes that we get so busy and we don't invest enough time in our kids that we've got kids who see themselves as an intrusion in our life and inconvenience in our life and they become become disheartened and discouraged. And our discipline isn't well received because we're so busy. We're always go, go, go. The answer might be if we could somehow carve out more time and invest more time, the discipline would be better received. At the end of the day, dads particularly, I would say to us, we've got to make sure our kids know that we love them before and after we discipline. And the best way to do that is to spend time with them. Because if your kids question your love, they won't receive your discipline. Now, second idea about discipline is this. Discipline should be done with an eye to the future. Remember what Solomon and the American Humane Association said. They said positive discipline helps children to grow into responsible adults. Remember that? And Solomon said, discipline your children while there's hope. Otherwise, you'll ruin their lives. This is important. Everybody awake? Oh, yeah. Okay. Parents, particularly, if we're not careful, discipline can become more about the present than the future. Right? Because if, if in, in our busy, crazy lives where there's so much going on and there's so much is vying for our attention, sometimes discipline can be a result of our irritation. I'm just fed up with this. Boom! And we go crazy. Right? I would just encourage you to ask this question when you're thinking about disciplines. If this behavior continues, what kind of an adult will my child be? If this behavior continues, for instance, if my child is always interrupting, what kind of an adult will he be? Disrespect. If my child is consistently disrespecting and I allow it to continue, what kind of an adult will my child be? 
Now, I'm a little bit of a rampage. I don't have a Bible verse for this, but let me just go. I, you know, I, what I'm seeing a lot in kids is, and I, God, I sound old. Scott, I sound old. <laughs> So here's what I see, like, um, I see that kids are experts on silliness these days, right? I mean, there's so much that's vying for the attention, it's just silly. And, and I, I, I watch what's happening on, on YouTube and Instagram and, and all this stuff, and I'm like, if that's all that consumes my kids' attention, some of it's fine, you know, we did stupid stuff when we were kids, but listen, if that's all that consumes their time, what kind of an adult will they be? Will they be able to think rationally? Will they be able to handle a budget? Will they be able to lead people? Will they be able to build something? If all, of the, all that consumes their time is, is silliness, if my child will not clean up her mess, if she walks into a room, makes a huge mess, and walks away, and I don't correct that, what kind of an adult will this person become? True story coming up. You ready for this? Chinese toddler, um, this happened in China. The parents actually um, allowed this child, as a, as a matter of recreation, to tear up books. Right? So, th- th- to, to them, this is what the mom said. We don't have time for much reading here. All right? You can see where this story is going, right? Um, they allowed him, as just a matter of recreation, to tear up books. And then a mo- in a moment of brilliance, they actually put their entire savings in a book. You know where this is going? Look at this. So this child finds this book with approximately $4,600 in it. They had been saving up to buy a house. He shreds the book in which is all of their savings. This is what the mom said. We didn't really care when he ripped up the old books we had lying around. It was easy to buy cheap old books down the market, which he happily ripped into small pieces. I thought if I left him alone with a book for an hour, it would be no problem. It wouldn't be if he was reading it, right? And we could hear the ripping sounds from the kitchen, but didn't think anything of it. My family told me that it was not a good idea, and now I realize they were right. After we found all of our money and ripped it up, it was all of our savings. Look at this. This is them trying to put all the money back together. Isn't that insane? She says now, she's put a stop to her son's destructive habit, and says, I realize it perhaps wasn't very sensible. I'm just glad that they found a bank who said, hey, we'll, we'll work with you. That's a nightmare. I mean, imagine if this child had been allowed to continue that pattern of behavior. I mean, he would have ended up destroying a lot more than just their savings account. See, all I'm saying to you is that as parents, when we discipline, it's critical that we discipline with an eye to the future. Not so much what's happening. I'm, I'm inconvenienced. I'm, I'm a little upset. You're kind of in the way, and so I'm going to discipline you. Rawr. It's more a matter of I, if this behavior continues, you're going to be a disaster in the future. So I've got to discipline you in this window of hope. Does that make any sense? Number three, and here's where things get a little more practical. Discipline should be predetermined. Now, I've discovered that if discipline is not predetermined, it will be dependent on my mood. Anybody else find that? Like, if I'm in a bad mood, if I'm tired, if I'm stressed, if I'm hungry, like, discipline is going to be, you know, like, just off the charts, you know, like, you know, you've got to sleep outside for a week in the winter. And Sherry's like, that's not nice, right? Oh, you're right. So if, like, when, if my mood is bad and discipline is not predetermined, it's insane. If I'm in a good mood, well, you can get away with anything. Yeah, you backtalk me. Give me a high five. We don't normally like that, but you know. If discipline is not predetermined, my mood determines what kind of discipline the child will receive. But if discipline is the key to my child's success, and Solomon and the American Human Humane Association both say that it is, then I have to be intentional about it. So let me give you a really practical tip about how to do this. A couple of years ago, Sherry and I sat down, and we identified a handful of problem areas in our home. We, we identified these are, these are continuing behaviors that we see in our home that we are not okay with. These are not going to produce great value-adding adults. So we identified the problem, and we named a punishment that came along with it. So when we see this behavior, you can expect that this 
action is going to happen to you or on you, right? And then we tailored it to fit each child. I'm going to talk about, a little bit more about that in a minute. We created a Word document. We call it our Fixing Problems document. We held a family meeting. We explained to everyone, these are the problems we've seen in our home. If we see them again, this will be the result. Do you understand? Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Do you, six times. Do you understand? Do you understand? Right. And then we hung it on the fridge. And whenever an infraction occurs or whenever a problem occurs, there's no question about what's going to happen. The discipline is never dependent on our mood. The, the kids know what's coming. In fact, they'll call it out. Right? If there's disrespect, oh, corner time. That's right. <laughs> See, they know in advance, if, if I hit, this happens. If I leave a mess, this happens. If I yell, this happens. And I'll just tell you this, predetermined discipline takes the guessing out of it for your kids and for you. And I, parents, this is so huge. If you haven't done this, please do this for the sake of your kids, for the sake of your sanity, and for the sake of the future adult that you're going to give to the world. Sit down and identify the problem areas in your home and connect to those problem areas disciplines. And then take the next step. Have a conversation with your kids, hang it on the fridge, and consistently execute those. Now, does that make sense? Discipline should be predetermined. Number four, discipline should be significant. This is really important. If discipline doesn't cause pain, the problem won't stop. This is so politically incorrect, but it's right. If discipline doesn't cause pain, the problem won't stop. Listen, for some kids, timeout is not going to work. Like at our house, we have a bunch of different phrases that we use. Sometimes we'll call it a thump on the rump, a smack on the crack, a hit where you sit, and that just goes on and on and on. Sometimes that's what's needed. But for others, a good solid thump on the rump just won't work. That individual might need a timeout. All I'm saying to you is this. As a parent, your job, you have to have a PhD in your child. Your job is to know what will cause them the greatest pain, the greatest inconvenience. I mean, when my kids, when our children think about disobeying, I want them to think it's not worth it to disobey. Because I know what's going to happen. It's not worth it. I would choose to obey rather than choose to disobey and experience the consequences. Here's the scoop. Are you ready for this? I see a lot of parents setting their kids up for disastrous futures because they won't cause them pain. Now, I'm not necessarily, ta- I'm, I'm certainly not talking about abuse. Very, very clear. I'm not talking about abuse. That's why we talk about predetermined discipline. If your discipline isn't causing inconvenience for your children, There's no need for them to stop doing what they're doing. If your child knows there's no significant pain or significant inconvenience attached to disobedience, why would they do what you want? I mean, think about that. You you do the same thing. You ever see one of these signs? Like, are are you more likely to speed down a back country road or a construction zone? Where are you more likely to speed? Back country road. Why? Because... (laughs) They don't have these signs on the backcountry road. You know if you speed in a construction zone, the hammer is going to come down hard and it's going to hurt. There's going to be a significant amount of pain connected to your act of defiance. If the discipline is not significant in your home, gang, listen to this. Don't expect your child to slow down. I'd love to camp out here for a while, but I think the point is made. Discipline has to inconvenience your child. And please, again, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm simply saying, Solomon said, look, discipline your child while there's a window of hope. If you don't, you will destroy their future. If your discipline is not inconveniencing them or making them realize, I don't want to do that again, then you're not going to change their future. Oftentimes, here's what I see. Parents' discipline is more a matter of stress relief for them. They, They put up with their child's disbehavior, misbehavior, 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 and then it's over. Child's like, well, I can take one smack on the crack as long as I can keep doing what I want to do. Maybe the smack on the crack isn't the thing. 
You understand that it's got to be significant. Number five, this is important. Discipline should be personalized. And this is kind of connected to the previous idea. What is significant to one child is absolutely meaningless to another. I mean, I have a child that will literally melt when we give a disappointed look. I have another child to whom if I shoot that same look, she'll stare me down. It means nothing. I have one child that hates corner time. I have another child that will create an entire fantasy world in the corner. I have, a, I have one child that the, the threat of a thump on the rump is good enough to help her think twice about disobeying. I have another child, I could hit her with a flying elbow off the top rung and she would still get back up for more. All right, that was a little WWE reference for those of you who don't know. Right. Here's the point. For discipline to be effective, it's got to be personalized. So what might work for your boy may not work for your girl. And this is what I mean. As a parent, you have to have a PhD in your child. You have to actually sit down and say, what works for this child? What will cause them significant inconvenience or significant pain, significant enough that they'll say, I'm not going to do it again? Because again, corner time may not work. Banning from social media may not work. You got to figure out what works. Discipline must be personalized. And in our home, our home, we've discovered that when we predetermine our discipline, it helps to talk about every child. So we sit down and we talk about every child. What's the problem? What's the discipline? Will it work for this child? It takes some time, but guess what? There's a window. And if you get the discipline thing right, you're going to add a significantly valuable adult. Now keep in mind that when putting together this whole idea of discipline, age and interest play a significant role in this discussion. I mean, spanking a teenager, not cool. We can't do that, right? Uh, time out for a two-year-old, I mean, you've got to make your own decision on that, but I'd submit it's not terribly effective. And I have six, remind you. Number six, and this is a biggie, discipline should be consistent. I mean, if you're off one day and you're on another, pretty soon your kid won't know what to expect, and when they don't know what to expect, you can expect the worst. If your child is unsure about what's coming, if they're not sure if you're on or off, you can pretty much assume the worst. Because here's, this is true, follow me on this. Inconsistent discipline leads to inconsistent behavior in your child, which leads to inconsistent adults. And another way to talk about that is a life that's ruined. Remember what Solomon said? Discipline your child while there's hope, otherwise you'll ruin their future. If your discipline is determined by your mood, if your discipline is determined by your energy level, if your discipline is determined by your stress level, you're going to be inconsistent and you're going to be a point of irritation to your children. Now listen to this. This is big. It's a tough one because consistent discipline requires this, that you get up off the couch. Right? Right? Now, this is a tough one for me because when I'm in the middle of a Sunday afternoon man movie, which, by the way, is a normal thing in our house. The girls, they take their nap and dad watches a man movie. And then something's going on and, and that means I got to stop my man movie and go address whatever the case is. It's inconvenient. But it's important that we be consistent. It oftentimes, being consistent requires that we excuse ourselves from conversations to go address a problem. It requires that we ourselves be inconvenienced. Remember this, though. Look at this. Discipline that inconveniences you today will make you proud tomorrow. If we'll take the time and the care and the energy to think through and be thoughtful about this matter of discipline, we will have sons and daughters who make us proud. Now, my kids aren't there yet. My kids, my oldest is 12. But here's why I know this. First of all, I look at the scriptures and I see what they say. But secondly, I've talked with enough parents because Sherry and I have made it a practice to talk with parents who have kids that we want our kids to be like. And we talk to them and we say, tell us what did you do right and what did you do wrong? What would you do again and what would you do differently? And, and this, is, this is over and over and over the lesson that we're learning from parents. Thoughtful and consistent in this matter of discipline. No. I just want to encourage you, parents, Listen. 
Parenting is a tough game, isn't it? It's tough. So I just want to give everybody in here like a high five. Come on, give me a high five, right? And I want to encourage you to stay with it. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to blow it. But you'll figure it out. Just stay with it. Love your kids well. And I want to, I want to just put these six ideas up on the, on the screen again regarding discipline. Because I think they're, they're helpful. And I would encourage you to just take them and process them as you have a conversation about discipline in your home. I mean, I've got, we're, we're working on it in our home. Work on it in your home, right? It's done in the context of love with an eye to the future. It's predetermined. It's significant. It's personalized. It's consistent. Now, I promise that as you do this, you're going to hear you're the worst parent ever. But in the end, it's worth it. So this weekend, um, our family actually began watching a movie. It was about a single mom, and uh, she had two young boys. This mother struggled with depression. She had been abandoned by her husband. She lived in, in severe poverty. Um, and when, when these boys were preteens, uh, she made a decision to significantly cut TV time and actually to have them read two books a week and write a report. And here's the crazy thing. The mom couldn't read. So they would write their report of their books, and they, and they would submit the report to her, and she would make marks on it like she had read it. But when they finally became adults, they realized mom didn't even know how to read this whole time. When she first rolled this, this idea out to them, we're going to cut TV time, I'm going to have you start reading books, and I want you to actually learn from the books that you read. Um, this was the line that they said to her. Guess what they said? They said, you're the meanest mom ever. That was the line. But she stuck to her guns. And today, you know one of her boys. He started an environment that was not conducive to success. He started an environment, and, and, and there was lots and lots and lots of reasons for him to fail. But she, he had a mother who understood how to discipline and to do it effectively. And today, you know this man is Ben Carson. Ben Carson is one of the leading neurosurgeons in America and is currently running for president of the United States. He had a mom who understood what Solomon wrote. Discipline your child while there's hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. She decided to create something great through discipline. And we have this promise. We've seen lots and lots and lots of parents, and we have the principles through God's word that assure us of this same thing. As we as parents will discipline our child today, the possibility of them becoming great adults increases significantly. So here's what I want to do. Assignment. Again, you're an adult. You can choose to not do this, right? But I strongly encourage you to do this. To spend time this week Looking at your home, be an expert on your home. Be an expert on your child. Identify problem areas. Think through these principles. We're going to post them on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash mychurch18. Think through these principles and begin to, uh, begin to put together a plan for discipline. Write it down. Put it on the fridge. Share it with your family and do it. And we will produce children who add value in every environment that they're in. Now, this is a tough one. Parenting is tough. But here's the good news. We have a heavenly father who loves us dearly. He's a great father. He's given us some great ideas in a book called the Bible. He will help us as we reach out to him in prayer. Literally, there are, there are children that you will have to pray more for than others. Can I get a witness? So you pray about them, and it's amazing what happens. Talk to other parents who are, who, are, who are already gone through this journey, who have kids that you respect. Let's do this. I want to pray for you, and then we're going to go home, or to Mo's. God, we, uh, so first of all, I just, on a, on a personal note, I just want to say a huge thanks for my girls, for my wife. Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing. Um, and, and, you know, actually, that reminds me, Lord, that to think of um, the single parents, mom, or moms and dads who are doing this alone. Good night. Would you please, Father, come alongside them, put your arm around those who do this parenting thing alone. This is such a big deal. 
they're going to need um, they're going to need some extra from you. So I pray that you would uh, step up, Lord, and, and give that to them. Give them wisdom. Give them courage. Give them patience. Give them friends. And then, Lord, I pray for uh, moms and dads in this room. I start with myself and Sherry. We have this incredible responsibility of, of raising children who will become adults. Help us to think prayerfully and, and wisely through this conversation about disciplining. We, can't, let, let, we don't want to miss this window of hope. We want our kids, Lord, to grow up and be um, people who add value to their spouses and their children and their workplace and their church and their community and our world. Help us to be thoughtful about this matter. Not everybody's going to agree on, on the way we discipline, and that's okay, but I pray, Lord, that we'll wrestle through these principles because I think they're spot on. I think that we can find, um, make a good case for them, Lord. I, I just pray that uh, each, each mom and dad today would begin the process of thinking through these and applying them because we love our kids. And they may not understand that. Quite frankly, there are going to be lots of points where they look at us and say, you're the worst parent ever, and they're actually going to mean it. But someday, God, I, I'm confident of this because it's been my experience and lots of others' experience, we'll look at our parents and say, thank you. Thank you for this group of men and women and, and, um, that's here today. God, I, just, I, I pray, Father, that every parent that's here today, you'll give them a high five and encourage them. Parenting can be crazy, you know, and uh, we just we look to you, Father, for wisdom and for extra love and patience and um, help us to get this right, Father. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.